What's going on, family? Live and direct on the air. Live and direct on the air. Y'all know the brand freedom is a must. Freedom is definitely a must. Hoping everybody's well, everybody's safe, everybody's healthy. Everybody living for the day, get them all never promised, man. So I got a message, and this message right here is to all the brothers and sisters that been locked down. Whether it was for a year, two years, decades, 20 years, 25 years. It's also a message to the families of those that were in prison. Because, you know, and I say that because the families were the ones that were going up there to visit us, to make sure our commissary was right, and so forth. So they know also what us brothers and sisters uh, uh, go through in the prison only because we tell them and, you know, them constantly being there for us, they know. Because we tell them what goes on, everything that goes on in the prison. So this message is, again, to all the brothers and sisters who did time and all the families who also did time with those that, their family members that did time and they know a lot of stuff that go on when in the prison. So I always say, man, that I know I, I, I can never forget what I went through in the time that I was in prison, man, with the police, with the administration, and all the stuff that we thought they wouldn't do, they can't do, they won't do, and so forth. See, a lot of people that don't know or never been in prison or never had family in prison, they think that, nah, it's impossible that police officers, correction officers, politicians, and all the stuff here, they're not crooked, they run by the book, that's why they're there. That is not fact. That's a lie. Shit happens behind the scenes. And a lot of things happen in prison that a lot of brothers and sisters come home that they went through, you know, them situations in prison, but they come home and they try to forget and they don't speak about it no more. And I don't think that that is correct only because when you don't speak about it, you know, it, it, I call it a lost war. And the reason why I call it that because you left the mother ones behind that still got to suffer to the stuff that we went through, the abuse we went through. You know, the police not feeding us. Or uh, the police setting us up with a banger in, in, in our cell. And when you came back, they put you in a box. When you went in the box, uh, no feeding. They didn't want to let you take showers. None of that. They, they, you know, went and told other inmates that they gave them cigarettes or TV or whatever if they go and beat this inmate up and all that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the squad, when they come in and, and beat you up. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things, man, that, you know, uh, it's stuff that I can't forget, man. Like, and not only forget that I can't believe that these people in these positions are doing you know, sometimes I look at these dudes, these cops and all this stuff here, and correction officers, the politicians that do illegal shit and finally get caught. And I say, damn, man, that could have been a position for a brother and a sister that really wanted to uphold that position. You know, to do it right. You know what I'm saying? Not to fuck that position up. You know, people wish they had those positions so they could do the right thing with those positions. So... Again, this message is for all that have been in jail, the families that did the bids with their loved ones that was in prison. And I'm, I'm calling for an emergency call, man. You know, right now, I, you know, I, I do I do a lot of things for a lot of brothers and sisters that are in jail. If if they are too far from me, uh, I do what I could do. I send a letter. Uh, I send money for their commissary, you know, because they so far, so I really can't visit them. Or I would have to set up, you know, when I could go visit them and take the time either to fly, fly there, to drive there, to go and see these brothers and sisters because they far. So, you know, meanwhile, because they so far, I do what I can, and that is helping them write letters, uh, you know, send money for their commissary, money for their phone so they can call, and stuff like that. I do the best that I can. You know, I'm only one man. You know, I wish I had a team, you know, and I always said I wish I had a team that was able to work with me so we can better help the brothers and the sisters locked up. You know, we got guys that come and go, they come, then they go and, yeah, I'm going to do this, do that. They come home after we help them out and they forget about the cause, never call, never look back, never came to see me, never nothing. You know what I'm saying? So they, they forgot about their people. But they forget that, God forbid, if they go back, 
Not that I wish anybody to go back. God forbid if they go back, they're going to call for help. And I'm sorry to tell you, man, I'm not, I'm not with helping brothers and sisters like this, man. Because you forgot the cause, man. You forgot where you came from. But in any event, the emergency call is this. We got a brother, Jeremy. Bosby. He's in Texas prison. Bird unit. And he's been in he's been in prison for decades. But since he's been in prison, he's been what I do on the outside and what others do on the outside. Advocating for prisoners, prison reform. You know what I'm saying? For the prisons. But he has been doing it from the inside. He's been fighting police abuse, what the police are doing, the corruption, the Department of Corruption, uh, what the waters are doing, how they turn their face the other way to let, you know, uh, police tell other inmates to beat other inmates up, uh, not feeding them, put them in the box for no reason, not, you know, not letting them do a lot of things that they have the right to do and that they could do. You know, they figure that when you go in there, you're a slave, you ain't got no right to do shit, to do nothing. You're just done. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not so. Even though we lose a lot of privileges and, and, and you know, we still entitled to fair treatment and, and you, know, you know, fairness. You know what I'm saying? We there to do our time for a crime that we committed or we didn't commit and we trying to get up out of there and we trying to get home. We trying to program, do what we got to do. That's it. You know, we're not there to create shit, you know, even though a lot of dudes go in there and they're looking for problems, they get into these gang shit. You know, that, that's them. So this brother been advocating in the prison. He's coming out in newspapers as an advocate. The Chronicle in Texas, uh, you know, because he constantly write the newspapers, the news, governors, everybody. And he's come out in a lot of newspapers. And I have the links. Anybody who would like the links of these newspapers and the article to read more about Jeremy, you know, send me send, send me an email at live and direct on the air at gmail.com. And I send you guys all the articles that he has come on. So when he does these articles, they move him from prison to prison, from box to box. They don't feed him in a box. They don't let him receive visits. They don't, you know, let him go to commissary. A lot of things that they violated his rights in the prison. So it's come to a point that Jeremy now had another brother, 27 years, his partner, working with suicide prevention and trying to help dudes, you know, that get stressed out in there by the police abusing them, by beating them up. And, you know, a lot of them commit suicide. So they, they you know, they started this thing amongst them, suicide prevention. So this brother, Jeremy's friend, 27 years, about to come home and, and the, the police have stressed him out so much, threatening him and did all type of stuff that this brother don't killed himself, supposedly. Remember, the brother was an advocate for suicide prevention, but he committed suicide. You know, son, put, you, put in your mind to think about it. A brother that was doing suicide prevention killed himself, suicide. In any event, rest in peace to that brother, 27 years, about to come home, finally committed supposedly suicide. You know what I'm saying? How fucked up is that? 20, after 27 years, you're about to come home. And, you know, these police harassing and the administration don't want to listen to the brothers that write them letters about their staff, about the, 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 the corruption officers, you know, about what they're doing. Because they believe everything that the corruption officers say, so the administration pushed that to the side. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's gone to a point where they threaten Jeremy to kill him. They want to kill him. They want to hurt him. They said, any day now, you're going to be next. You know, he's getting threats. He's trying to reach out the best that he can to the outside, man, through other people in the box that are able to write letters and do things. You know, he's able to, 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 to send letters to the to brother down the hall that the brother down the hall could send that to the newspaper, trying to put the word out that they about to kill him. And, and let's know that Jer Jeremy is not a dude that's going to kill himself. At all. He's not going to kill himself. So if something happened to him in there, somebody's had accountable for that. Uh, 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 corruption officers, the administration, the prison where he's at. And uh, they're going to be held accountable because Jeremy is not a person that's going to commit suicide. They killed him. 
God forbid. So if something happened to Jeremy, we already know what happened. We need everybody, man, to call this prison, the bird unit. I got the info here, man. All we need you to do is call a simple phone call and let the administration know that uh, the warden, the depot pro of security, whatever it may be, that they know we are calling, we in support, even though we don't know this brother. I, I deal with a lot of brothers I don't even know, and I help them out. You don't gotta know them. You just gotta know that we went through that, and that this is really happening, and that we need to assist these brothers and sisters that we cannot forget because we've been through that. You know what I'm saying? One phone call help out to let them know, listen, we calling about such and such. This is an ID number. We here in full support for him. Something happens to him. We're gonna have the jail accountable. And uh, we know the situation, we know what's going on. That's it, 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 it take a few seconds, man. You know what I'm saying? If you can't send money, you can't do a visit, you know, you can't do other things, at least make a phone call, man, to the prison. Record it if you can. Send an email to the prison. You know what I'm saying? So you can lock it down that you did this. You know what I'm saying? And and, and help support. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you, your support brings change and awareness. So the brother's name is Jeremy. Uh, middle name is L-A-D-O-N. Last name is Busby. B-U-S-B-Y. His ID number is 00881193. He's in a Texas prison. It's called the Bird Unit. 21... FM 247 Huntsville, Texas Every code is 77320 The telephone number for this prison Is 936-295-5768 The warden's name is Charles Landis We need to call And support this brother As well as a lot of other brothers Who are going through the same situation Man or being abused, not being fed, put in the box, set up, setting other people to beat up, you know, brothers, you know, stuff that the Department of Corruptions is not supposed to be doing. They didn't take an oath to do this, but they're doing it. We need your assistance, man. You know what I'm saying? Call for this brother, a brother who's been advocating, not for him, advocating in every jail he has been to the decades that he's been in prison for all the prisoners, for programs, better programs, for better food, you know, uh, uh, for you know, for better administration, for better corruption officers to get correction officers and not more corruption officers to help and, and and do things the way they're supposed to be, you know, by the oath that they took. We need your help, man. Please take a few minutes, man. Call there, send an email, send a fax. Whatever you can do to help this brother, Jeremy's a good brother. I've been dealing with him for years. You know, he has uh, 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 websites and stuff that, are, you know, you guys are hit me up on live and direct on the air at gmail.com. I'll send you all the links to the websites. A lot of people in Texas are advocating for him on the outside. We need to show the administration over there that it's not just the people around the jail that's advocating from where he's from, that other states are advocating for this brother. You know, they come and say, damn, other, other states are advocating for this brother. You know, what's going on here? Yeah, he got peoples all over. We, you know, we, we support brothers and sisters in prisons all over. You know what I'm saying? And and they need the support, man. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of things going on too with the mail. I did a letter for a brother named Daryl Craig. Upcoming parole and stuff. Finally, I went to a box and got a stock of mail. I'm going I'm to I'm post that up too because I got to return the sender mail, not only from him, from a bro brother named Noel that's up in Eastern or in Comstock. I think it's Comstock. I got to check the letters. Also came back. Another letter from Joseph uh, Rowe came back. So, you know, and not only that, when we send these emails to them, these brothers, have, you know, hit me back. Yo, what's going on? Long time. What do you mean long time? I've been sending you emails. And he got the proof of the email, and they're not getting these emails we're sending, or pictures, or or, or stuff that we're sending. This got to stop. This got to stop, and there's got to be a system where these people are not the ones that are running these systems, because the same people that run these systems, Department of Cor Corruptions, is the same ones that could, you know, delete 
and, and play with these systems. We need an outside agency to take over the, these things here that are not going to be biased, not going to be racist, and not going to be, a, you know, against prisoners because, you know, they went to jail because they made a mistake or whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? We got the right to be in there to be free from abuse. You know what I'm saying? From uh, uh, being free from being harassed by, you know, by, by, by these corruption officers, man. So we need your help. Again, Jeremy's a good brother, advocated for everything, you know, for, for all the brothers in there, everything that he see, he tells the administration, it doesn't work. He tells the Chronicles, the newspapers, attorney generals, nobody's doing nothing. We need the help. You know, we, we need to let the prisoners know that we got his back. Anything happened to him, we gonna help the warden all the way down from the administration, all the way from up top. Accountable, man, please. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all already know the brand. Live and direct on the air. Freedom is a must. Freedom is definitely a must. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the followers, subscribers, people that comment, people that, you know, that support the channel, support me, man. You know, without you, again, we nobody. You know what I'm saying? Peace.